Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Yasha, if you're new here, and today we're going to be doing a quick question and answer session from the Twitter account Future Rad Res. I sent out a tweet saying I was going to do this video, so a lot of people responded. Actually, a lot of people, I don't even know if I'll be able to put it all into one video. We'll see how fast I can go. So, one of the questions asked me, what was what is the most rewarding subspecialty? And for that, I have to say it just depends on what you like. So there are so many radiology subspecialties and a lot of people find different things rewarding. Like, I think that women's imaging is really rewarding because you get to see patients, like you, you really feel like you make an impact on their life because you're either telling them that there's something there or telling them that there's nothing there and you get to see the Im immediate reaction on their faces. And for some people that can be really rewarding. Interventional radiology is very rewarding for some people because you're working in emergent situations, you're where you see the patient and their family like every day, you round. And even diagnostic radiology when you're just reading cases is really rewarding. When you make really life-changing calls, I think that's very rewarding. You call the ER and you're like, hey, this person has a perforated appendicitis and now they all of a sudden know what's going on. That in and of itself is also rewarding. So it just depends on your definition and what you like and don't like. That's really what will be rewarding for you. How This question was interesting. How do you keep up your interpersonal skills in radiology? And this question was a little bit longer, but I'm paraphrasing. And that just made me laugh because people always say that when you're in med school. They're always like, why are you going to radiology? You're so good with people. You're so good with patients. And it's like, has anyone, have you ever met a doctor that doesn't talk to other people at all? Like, I just don't understand that entire concept of, Oh, radiology, you're so good with patients. First of all, there are subspecialties within radiology where you interact with patients every single day, like IR or women's imaging. And then every other radiologist has to discuss findings with other people every day, whether you're looking at a console and you're asking another radiologist what they think, whether you're calling the primary care physician and saying, this is what I see and I think that the next step would be this. And all the time, people are coming down to the reading room and saying, hey, what do you think of this study? I mean, all of those interactions require good interpersonal skills. Plus, generating a radiology report actually requires a lot of finesse. You want to convey the right amount of drama, the right amount of concern, and being able to do that is actually a very important skill in radiology. You don't want to blow something off if it's really important and you don't want to make someone think something is malignant when it's benign. So you have to really find your way with words and all of that is part of interpersonal skills. So this idea that radiologists don't talk to people and don't need those skills is totally invalid in my opinion. And I really wish other clinicians would stop saying that because it gives medical students the wrong idea that I'm just gonna be talking to, I'm not gonna be talking to anybody and that's not the case. You talk to people every single day. I had a couple questions about creating an effective personal statement, how do you address red flags? And I made a whole video on this and I also on the Future Rad Res Twitter page retweeted a tweet from a program coordinator talking about personal statements. So you can also look at those, but just to summarize what I said, basically you need to talk about why you love radiology, what drew you, like tell me about your path, like how did you find radiology? Because it's not a required rotation in most schools, so why did you find it? How did you find it? And secondly, um, I want to know about any gaps in your application. So that's a good place to talk about red flags, that's a good place to talk about if you took a year off or you know something like that. And that way, before I even look at your application, I kind of know who you are and what to expect. And so those are my basic tips for a personal statement, but you can watch the entire video. Um, I did a whole video on that. This was a good question. It's how to seek mentorship. How do I seek mentorship? And I do think it can be really, really scary as a med student or even as a resident if you want to get to know somebody and you're kind of shy and you're nervous and you really feel like they, you have the same um, interests as them. What I suggest is just doing it. I know that sounds really scary and totally unhelpful, but Find a way to reach out to them, whether it's a resident who knows them, whether it's through some organization. Try to find a way to at least get their email address or get some sort of contact information so that you can start to make that connection. And all you have to ask is like, you know, we have the same interests or I'm really interested in this thing that you've done and I really appreciated it or I like the talk you gave or something like that. And just say like, these are my goals. And I was wondering if 
you would mentor me. I mean, it's really all you have to say. And some people will say no, that they don't have the time or something like that. But what's the worst that can happen is that they'll say no and then, you know, you're right back where you started. It's not a big deal. And now you've already gone through that pathway. And oftentimes, they might know somebody who will have more time to mentor you. So they'll be like, oh, you know, I may not be able to help, but this other person will. And now you have a new connection. So my advice is just find them, whether it's on social media. A lot of radiology people are on Twitter, Instagram, um, or just by organizations that you're already a part of, I think. Or just like, you know, clinically, if they're at your radiology residency or radiology program, just reach out to them. There's no harm in it. And if you do it the right way, in the sense that you are respectful and you are not overpowering, I think that people are very, very um, receptive, to, receptive to that kind of thing. So just do it and see what happens. And if you're nervous, just run it by a resident or someone else that you know more closely and they'll, they'll tell you like, oh, this person will either A, like that or not and just see where it goes. No harm. I had a question about how to maximize your OA rotations and that's a really good question. I would say definitely meet with the program director. You can also sometimes meet with the chairman depending on the department, not everywhere, and see who you should get a letter from. This you can ask residents a lot of times and you can ask the chief residents because oftentimes they read applications and they can see kind of where letters come from. And I would approach them early and just say, I'm looking for a letter. Please tell me what I can do to get a letter from you, if that's what you're trying to do, if you're trying to get a letter. If you're doing an away rotation during interview season, you can also try to find out if the interviews have already gone out and you could also interview while you're there. I did that and I got an interview that way. Um, what else could you do? Those are really the main things is just be receptive to feedback, ask the program director what they look for, ask them for a letter, meet with them and really make your interest known. Like I would really like to come here if that's true. If it's not true, I would not suggest saying it over and over. Um, that's really it though, you know, just be a good student make sure you show up on time and don't ask to leave early. If they dismiss you, that's different. But yeah, just be a good student and meet with the program director. Oh, and doing emails afterwards, that again is like very touchy and it just depends on the place. I would say you can send a thank you to whoever you worked with and if you really enjoyed your time with them, but obviously you don't want to keep sending emails because it's like against the NRMP code if you're lying. So just be mindful of that. Check their policy. You can ask other applicants or even ask the residents what they think. A lot of times the residents will actually know like who to email and sometimes you can just email the program coordinator to say thanks. And really I would do that. I always tend to be more conservative with that type of stuff. Like don't send too many emails, just send a thank you. And really that's it. I ultimately don't think that emails like that, even after interviews, make that much of a difference in your ranking. But what do I know? I'm just a resident. So to each their own, do what you think feels right. Somebody asked about intern year and how was it? And is there anything I wish I knew going into it? So. First of all, how was it? I had a really easy intern year. I did a transitional year and it was actually really fun. I made a lot of friends. Somebody asked me about intern year and if I wish I knew anything going into it and how I felt about it. I had a really easy intern year. I did a transitional year and I would not go back and do an internal medicine year or a surgery year. And your experience obviously will vary but based on what you do. If you really like surgery and you do a surgery year, you're probably gonna love it. Um, I have a co-resident who did that. If you hate surgery and you end up with a surgery year, you're probably gonna hate it. So just look at the breakdown of all of the intern year, um, like the rotations, the months of elective time, and really see like what you think you would enjoy the most. I mean, does four months of floors versus six months of floors really make that much of a difference? I don't really know. But I don't think that in the grand scheme of things it makes that much of a difference. I think surgery comes out with a better idea of like the anatomy because they're literally doing surgery but I don't think ultimately it makes that much of a difference. Is there anything I wish I knew going into it? Not really. I think a lot of people wish they looked into like the actual breakdown of their rotations a little bit more because there are some medicine years that are more like transitional years and then there are transitional years that are more like medicine years so you just have to do your research but I don't really think there's anything I wish I knew going into it. We all kind of go into it knowing nothing and you come out of it learning a lot. So 
just enjoy your fourth year. Don't worry too much about intern year. You'll get there and the residents will help you a lot. I'm going to end with a couple of questions about next year. So people are wondering how is this next interview cycle going to change and how can we kind of anticipate that and adapt. So if you all don't already know, the AAMC came out with a statement that all of the interviews should be online or virtual. And that is really, really difficult for us as programs because I really feel like if you're not one of like the top 10, top 20 programs in radiology, you really depend a lot on like how people feel when they come visit. I, that's how I chose my residency was because I got there, I had never heard of it and I showed up and I loved it. That's not gonna happen this year. And I think that's really scary. How do you cope with that? How do you deal with that? I don't know. Um, I'm still trying to figure it out and I think I'll do a full video on it when I really do figure it out, but I haven't yet. I haven't figured it out yet. A lot of programs are really going to need to, A, get on their social media game. Um, residents are already on there, so that's helpful. And I think that applicants are really gonna have to go the extra mile to show their interest. I mean, people are already anticipating applicants are going to apply for even more programs. And so the other side of that is that programs are gonna get way more applications. So how do you set yourself apart? I think definitely put in your interest in your personal statement. I think people are gonna have to do that a lot more this year, make more contacts, um, network online is fine. It's going to be really hard for both sides. I'm applying for fellowship this year and I'm also kind of struggling with the idea that I'm gonna to have to do this online virtually. So I guess the only thing that makes us all feel better is that we're all going through it. Um, nobody is exempt. I definitely think more people will end up at their home institutions for both residency and fellowship and that's good and bad. Depends which side you're on. For me it's probably bad because I don't have any fellowships at my residency. So I'm going to do a whole video on this but it's a good question. It's very important so stay tuned. I'm going to end with this last question. It's very deep and it's like, where do I see the future of radiology and how is it going to change and what do I, what do I hope for? I think that the major change that's going to happen in radiology is the use of AI. I think it's going to be very exciting when it actually gets to the level of like daily use. Um, when we can really use it for like a lot of things. Right now it's used for like a couple things and only at certain institutions. So when we get to use it more and it becomes like part of our everyday life, I'm super excited to see what that looks like. I think it will make our lives a lot easier as radiologists and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I also have a lot of hopes and dreams about radiology and medical education. I really, really want to see radiology as a rotation in medical school and it's only at in it's only a required rotation in 16% of medical schools which is a really 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 low number especially given that like almost every radio every specialty outside of radiology utilizes radiology like everybody orders imaging there are only a couple I could name I mean I'm thinking of up though and I'm sure that they even use radiology sometimes everybody uses radiology everybody needs studies and the fact that it's not a required rotation, even if you're not going into radiology, you can benefit from it. So that's my major goal, my major hope for radiology is that we are, we're doing better in the sense that we are doing more medical education at the med student level. I think that we do a disservice to our medical students by not being present in their curriculum. And I really wanna find a way to change that. So for me, that's my biggest hope and aspiration for radiology. And with that very deep question, I'm going to end this video. Thank you all for watching. If you have stayed all the way to the end, I appreciate you very much. I would like to give you a small spoiler that we are planning a program director panel on the future RadRes Twitter page. So it'll be set up a lot like the Zoom one that I did, um, was it a couple weeks ago or a month ago? And that will probably be in July or August, so stay tuned for that. I think that will answer a lot of questions about what's going to happen for the upcoming interview cycle. So if you're interested in that, follow the Twitter page at Future Rad Res. You can follow me at, at Yasha Gupta MD. And <clears throat> with that, I will end the video. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate you. Subscribe if you like it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.
Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Yasha. If you're new here and today I'm doing a quick question and answer from the Twitter 